What I love about the Sunshine Coast is the healthy, clean living. We have this wonderful lifestyle built around being more relaxed, a little bit more casual, no tie. But if we don't start planning now in a way that protects what we have, uh, and just allows growth to happen unplanned, then we're gonna lose so much of the beautiful parts of our Sunshine Coast, as well as that culture. Well, one of the things that, uh, that happened on the Sunshine Coast historically is that it was used by people from the city as a recreation destination. This led to uh, the evolution of a very relaxed, casual type of architecture where it was all about sense of place, uh, natural ventilation, natural light, taking advantage of views and vistas and of course the integration of landscape. We have a, a beautiful history that's dramatically tied to the landscape. There's a lot of place names like Maruchi, Ndiri, Coolum, Majimba, and these are the First Nation people's ancestors, but they're also uh, key characters in their moral teachings about how you should live in society, and they're tied to the landscape. That's a very special, unique, and rare foundation to build this region's sense of self take the idea of water and the movement of water and what water does to the landscape, it actually has shaped the whole landscape. And then when we start layering the humanity and our communities on that landscape, it's the interaction with the elements, they're all underpinned by the role of water. Our communities are as diverse as our landscapes and they're passionate about their distinct values, stories and lifestyles. This is an inherent quality that contributes to the character of the Sunshine Coast. We have a lot to learn from our first people, the Gubbi Gubbi and the Jinnaburra. And as new people arrive, the layers of culture, heritage and creativity on our places will grow. Through good passive design, we can design with good solar orientation, with great shading and with good natural cross ventilation these most marvellous spaces for you know, very pleasant occupation, but also significantly thereby saving enormous amounts of energy. And then what comes out of that is a very beautiful and unique and Sunshine Coast specific architecture. So the language of the architecture sort of embodies the characteristics of the Sunshine Coast. Well, Sunshine Coast, it's really made up of a series of landscapes. So there's so many different characters within the area. There's the hinterland, there's the coast, wetlands, beaches, and really the character of each place is defined by its landscape. Understand what the topography is, understand what the levels are, look at where the existing vegetation is and where new vegetation needs to be to provide for privacy and buffer and climatic response. And really um, take those things and map them as a trigger for all the design ideas to start with. One of the great opportunities for design is to provide a focus for creatives to come together through place and architecture and our streets and our cities and towns and really engage that artistic and creative community in a really public way. Why wouldn't we capture our views and vistas? We could be something that actually really creates joy and memory in our landscape. And the way you arrive over Budrum and look over the coastline or the way you're standing on Alexandria Headlands, we need to capture those experiences. The thing about designing for views is all about framing the view. We're really lucky on the Sunshine Coast to be surrounded by nature. Um, it's everywhere. It's in our backyards, it's in our parks, it's our waterways, it's our beaches. And that produces a whole lot of green corridors and open space networks. When we begin to recognise these spaces as assets, we can preserve and protect them if necessary. And then where appropriate, we can begin to use them as walking and cycling pathways and leaving the car at home. It's really important to understand uh, the community you're working in. Place-based design and character are not style-based. They're actually a reflection of the community that they live in, in terms of material selections. The character and uh, materials on a regional town was gonna to be quite different than a coastal town. There needs to be a, a greater um, 
a cooperation between all of the different design disciplines and design our services and our roads around these canopy trees instead of doing them as an afterthought. This principle is talking about putting people at the centre of design thinking. It's really important that our built environment is accessible, affordable and capable of accommodating the needs of our growing and increasingly diverse community. This is a really important principle because it's really about the future in ways. I mean, the whole strategy is about the future, but this one's really about looking ahead and thinking about those big things that are really going to be different. Population, more and more people moving to the area. We're going to have different types of jobs in a different type of economy. We're going to be getting around in different ways. And then, of course, we're going to have those key challenges of climate change. So obviously, we can't keep designing places the same way. I mean, that's a really challenging task, but it's a really exciting one as well thinking about what that future could be and, and making this a really resilient place. Good value is achieved when everything has been designed in. When you don't have to constantly retrofit, change and replace to get something to perform. That's costly and not achievable for everybody. Good design on the Sunshine Coast goes above and beyond minimum requirements. Good design adds value for everybody. When designing and building, it's really important to consider whole of life costs, including the ongoing maintenance and operational costs, so that those who occupy now and into the future can benefit.